This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this week's episode, we're taking a look at some of the most cursed weapons to have offended poor Jonathan over the past year. Yeah, so this, this is a deliberate effort to break my, my, break my brain, isn't it? Wow, 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 wow. Good Lord. I think I've just seen what happens when a, a Mexican drug cartel gets its hands on time travel technology. Jonathan and the whole team here at GameSpot just want to say thank you to everyone who's watched the show over the last year. We really appreciate your support. And of course, if you'd like to help out the Royal Armouries Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. And if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to keep an eye out for our upcoming new series, Loadout, a show where we take a look at the history and impact of some of the most iconic weapons in gaming, from the shotgun and Geralt's silver sword through to the M1 Garage and the Desert Eagle. Jonathan will be making plenty of appearances over on that show too, so make sure to check that out. Right, let's take a look at some of Jonathan's pain and torment from the past year. <laughs> Waving your gun around. Oh, hello. What the hell? <laughs> you did that deliberately, didn't you? <laughs> I'm gonna pause. Okay, I, I feel like I'm being trolled here. Because the MP5 has suddenly been customized to death as well. It's got everything under the sun on it. We've got an EOTech site, we've got a, an EOTech magnifier, we've got a laser light module, some sort of foregrip, modular forend to take all of that. And I think I saw a drum magazine as well, possibly a different stock. So just illustrating the lengths that one can go to. But um, just because you can doesn't mean you should. That'll do it. So we've just seen our protagonist retrieve an automotive component from a car's engine bay. And uh, anyone that's played the game will know this is a car's oil filter, which is magically being attached to the muzzle of this pistol, this uh, 1911 type pistol. Now you can make, without going into any details, a sound suppressor of sorts from an oil filter. Suffice it to say, you cannot screw it straight onto the end of a gun. It's also not potentially going to last very long. It's not going to be very efficient as a suppressor. The amount of sound suppression you're going to get from this is going to be relatively minimal. People will still hear a gun going off. Good eye. The sound suppressor is also far too quiet. It's not quite Hollywood pew pew. There's a, there's a bit of meat to the to the sound there, but for the, for gameplay purposes, obviously it's quite muted, uh, way more than what this repurposed bit of equipment could provide. I'm dead. Shoot the left hook. Awesome. So we've switched now to the the infamous Deagle with the same um, oil filter sound suppressor on it. Sound suppressors on Desert Eagles are um, rare shall we say, because there isn't much point to the Desert Eagle in the first place. Making it quieter is not usually something people want to do. Pausing. I can't let the clip of the optical sight go, I'm afraid. Sorry, guys. There are no optical sights, no reflex sights like, like we see here in use on small arms in the Second World War. What this is, is a couple of decades of modern warfare bleeding through to our Second World War. So um, get your modern war warfare out of my World War II, I suppose is what I would say there. Capture the objectives and maintain control of them for as long as possible. Pause. Good Lord. <laughs> I think I've just seen what happens when a, a Mexican drug cartel gets its hands on time travel technology, because that, that gold black finish is uh, pretty horrific. I like to think it would horrify a, a German soldier of the period as well. We're looking, of course, at the, the Sturmgewehr um, MP43, MP44, SDG44, with that horrific finish on it. And another nonsense optical sight. I think what annoys me about those the most is that they seem to be a default. If you're gonna start, surely you wanna start with the iron sights and then upgrade to the made up optics. Anyway, I'm starting to sound like uh, I want them to get off my lawn. So I'll stop talking. Yeah. So this is this is a deliberate effort to break my, my break my brain, isn't it? Well, um, they wanted a reaction, and um, here it is. It's it's a firearm that only a mother could love. I think is probably the best thing I can say about it. So it's our old friend the the Mosin, 
or the Mosin Nagant, or the, the three-line rifle, and it has been butchered. There's some sort of muzzle device on it that I can't quite see, thank, thankfully. Uh, scope mount with a with a 20 power scope or something on it, a uh, light and laser module. I, I suppose you could, you could maybe live with that, but then we have a sawn-off grip sticking out the back of the gun, wrapped in blue electrical tape, I think that is. And then the final kind of kick in the nuts, really, is the uh, ergonomic pistol grip, which is a contradiction in terms when you're dealing with this thing, which is just a complete stranger to the concept of ergonomics. This has been done deliberately, and uh, it hasn't gone unnoticed. <laughs> right, so I hadn't noticed the laser on the other side, so we've got two lasers. I think this thing would have a, a modicum of merit if you ditch the scope, because it's clearly, even in the game, I think it's easier to use with the lasers than with the scope and just try and sort of hip fire the thing which lasers are you know that's what lasers are for not necessarily hip firing but um aiming using the laser beam rather than a sight they have their place but i'm not sure their place is strapped to the size of a mosin nagant all right pause out of the gate with whatever this is god i think this is a garand what have they done to you? Yep, definitely a Garand action. Some bizarre, very 1990s to 2000s looking sporting stock. Ludicrous tank style, or maybe boys-esque, not really. Muzzle brake on the end there. Guess that would help with the recoil of the cartridge. It would. Did they have them then? No. And we've got an optical sight mounted over in front of the action. So at least we're not blocking anything from functioning there. Now we did have Garands with optical sights mounted on them, but not in the Second World War. The M1C, the M1D were, as far as I know, they may have been developed by 1945, but they were not issued. And we have a drum magazine, because of course we do. I can hear John Cantius Garand revolving in his grave, probably more efficiently than this drum mag revolves. What? 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 What just happened? So I didn't notice it the first time, but we shoot this, this abomination dry, and there's, there's the iconic ping. We can hear the ping, but if you look at the action, nothing comes out, except maybe the last case. Something's gone wrong here. An, an M1 ping without the clip. Very confusing. The V308, V as in vector, but 308 as in 0 0.308 of an inch. And if you look at the side of it, it says 7.62 NATO. The vector was designed as a pistol caliber submachine gun or carbine, depending whether it's semi-automatic or, or select fire like this one. And it makes a certain amount of sense in that configuration. Pistol cartridges are relatively low recoil. The Super V system in there that redirects the recoil downwards helps keep the muzzle rise to a minimum and somewhat reduce felt recoil. That works with pistol calibers. It wouldn't work with 7.62. There is no Chris in 7.62 NATO. I don't know whose idea this was. I don't know why it's in the game. Making it extra ridiculous <laughs> is the drum mag. Looks like a Surefire style drum mag. The size of the cartridge means it's got a big a longer, heavier barrel on it as well. Overall then, a existing wacky submachine gun turned into a very wacky assault rifle. The other aspect to this that's a bit of a, a rabbit hole to go down is whether you could even build a 7.62 version of this design. The way this V-shaped bolt is designed, I don't think there'd be room even in this stretched version for it to actually function correctly. Another curious design, the so-called assault rifle. It's not super clear to me in what way this is a, an assault rifle. I mean, you can upgrade it to be automatic, but it doesn't come automatic. By definition, it couldn't be an assault rifle because an assault rifle must be um, automatic, capable. None of the, I don't think any of the automatic capable guns in the game come as automatic. You have to find a, a specific receiver to allow that, which isn't quite how that works, but um, we'll overlook that. So let's assume that it's an automatic version and it's in 5.56. Yeah, it's a form of an assault rifle, but what is with the gigantic cooling jacket? Which is itself a, a puzzle because it's clearly based on the Lewis gun's cooling 
jacket, which is an air cooling jacket, it's a radiator essentially, inside an outer sheath. The lighter coloured flanges at the back there are the inner aluminium radiator that sits around the barrel and then it has a, a basically a heat shield over that, partly to protect the user, but primarily for, to allow this um, interesting forced cooling system where the muzzle gases pull cold air in through those veins at the back and over the barrel to cool it. Very clever, interesting system. It's the only gun that I'm aware of that did that, and it's on this assault rifle. This also has a filling port at the back for water and a big old bit of plumbing hanging off the bottom of it that goes somewhere under the gun and does something. So on the face of it, it's actually a water jacket, but that doesn't seem to factor into how it's actually used in the game. So it's a weird mashup of Lewis gun, and then it's got aspects of, weirdly, the Minimi light machine gun. So that lower receiver slash handguard is visually based upon the Minimi's handguard, and the buttstock looks to be reminiscent of the collapsing buttstock on the Minimi as well, although you have to kind of squint. So kind of a kind of a cool Star Wars style visual mashup of guns from different periods in, in our own history. Wow. Wow 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 wow. What can I say about this thing? It looks like somebody took a welding torch cutting torch, sorry, uh, to a Thompson. So we've got uh, Ostensibly a 1928 20, type receiver with the cuts for the drum mag, although the lower is M1. We've got a, a skeletal machined out grip, which you'll see occasionally these days, more so in games in real life. There's nothing like that at this time, except for the Sten had a, I believe experimental only, sheet metal folded, welded, skeletal pistol grip with a back plate so you didn't have to have a stock on it for paratroopers so that was real that did exist but it didn't look like this and it wasn't on a thompson yeah uh, the barrel's been cut right back it's probably an inch and a half long that's not going to do your ballistics any favors i can't quite work out what's going on with the foregrip but holding this thing would be difficult and uncomfortable and you'd probably shoot your fingers off let's see it in action Losing Never seen anyone do a tactical reload with a 100 round Thompson mag before. Having handled one and fired a 1921 Thompson with that drum fitted, let me tell you, simply replacing the mag, or taking the magazine off and putting it on, is difficult. Holding two of these gigantic things in one hand and like doing a retention reload with them, no. If you were lucky enough to have more than one of these mags, I don't know what you'd do, um, but you wouldn't be able to do that. I don't wish to be too critical, but this might be the weakest, the weakest sounding and recoiling Desert Eagle I've ever seen in a game. It looks pretty close to the Mark 19, 50 caliber, but the, the sound effect isn't particularly punchy, at least not on my speakers, and it doesn't recoil like the real thing does. So I think we've, got, I think we've hit a limitation here of uh, a third person game turned into first person. Okay, so when we go back to the classic third-person view with Trevor here, we see a much more exaggerated, much more accurate depiction of how this thing flips, at least the 50 caliber version, how this thing muzzle flips quite, quite dramatically. No, nothing much you can do about that, even if you are quite strong. So it looks much more meaty and realistic from the third-person view. Not great from the first. Oh, good lord. I may need, may need to take a moment on this one. Tremendously conflicted because on the one hand, I've been wanting to see someone put an EM2 in a game, other than that Fallout 4 mod that someone made, which looks a lot better than this. So let, let me get one. This is an automatic rifle EM2, experimental model two. And hopefully you can see why I'm face palming because broadly this is correct. So like if you if I showed it to you and closed your eyes, you might think, oh yeah, that's all right. But then it's it's been dropped on its carrying handle from a great height and that, and is weirdly deformed for no good reason. The pistol grip, which should be this uh, carved wooden thing, 
is wood, but then it has extra wood coming back here that doesn't exist on any of the real guns, and we have most of them here at the Royal Armouries. It has uh, checkering that, was, that never existed on, on the EM2. Little details like the trigger guard is quite sharply angled, which is more like the one on the later versions of this, the 7.62 NATO versions, where we Brits gave up on this short lower power cartridge and went with the American choice of 7.62 NATO, which is the first thing that killed this experimental design, by the way. The fore end, the handguard, is too short. It's been cut off too soon. There's a really bizarre birdcage flash hider that never existed for this rifle. So it's, this is kind of depressing, guys, because this is one of my favorite historic weapons. I wrote two chapters of my book about it, and it ought to look like this, not like that. And then we have this thing, which is, I swear this has been included just to break my mind. There's no physical way, as if you didn't already know this, that this thing could work. So it's yet another pump-action shotgun, it's got yet another non-functional hammer on the back of it, another non-functional bolt on the left side, which really ought to be on the right. We load it by kind of wafting underneath it, implying that we're loading a tube magazine underneath. And yet it has a drum magazine, and the drum magazine is mounted just under the muzzle. And I don't think I need to explain why that's not in any way realistic. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoy this kind of content, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel as we'll have new episodes of Firearms Expert Reacts every Saturday and new episodes of Loadout every Sunday. Again, please check out the links in the description of the video if you want to help support the Royal Armouries and we'll catch you next time.